Hey, hey everyone, it's me, Thinkifer. Today, we're going to address quite possibly one of the oldest questions, in fact, if not one of my favorite, most heavy-handed questions I've ever wanted an answer to, right back to my time as a child growing up playing Ocarina of Time. Okay, okay, no, it's not the Song of Storms paradox. We've already asked and explored that one link in the top right, but uh, no, no, none of that wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff here, no. Take a look at this. This scene right here. Ganondorf winds up a huge punch, hangs briefly in the air, and then proceeds to unleash an ungodly amount of strength into the ground. His imparted force destroying the floor beneath it with nothing more than his bare hands. How freaking strong is this guy's punching power? How much of it is Ganondorf's strength, and how much of this was caused from the magic used and the augmented strength boost from the Triforce? Could we actually use science to figure this out? Well, let's skip the punchline and find out. It's time for a thought process. Before continuing, however, I'm gonna have to give a disclaimer. So, understand this. We are almost certainly going to need to make a few assumptions and approximations, so take all of these numbers with a grain of salt. That said, we're going to try and get as close to crunching Ganondorf's power level with and without the Triforce of Power as possible. Now, in a situation like this, it's typically best to draw up the situation to understand what force or forces are occurring and what direction these forces are traveling prior to any kind of calculation calculations. Observably, we can see that Link's position is on the floor below Ganondorf. Ganondorf is in the air with his famous punch wound up, ready to unleash all of its unlimited potential. Now, the thing about this is, we can actually work out Ganondorf's punching power in two separate ways. One such method we could use would be to use Isaac Newton's equation, force equals mass times acceleration. Another method which is a bit more roundabout is that we could actually just look at the materials he is breaking and then calculate his super serious punching power off that. Now, what's actually funny is that both will actually yield different answers, and both will have different degrees of accuracy, and both methods tell us different things that we can actually take away. Let's start with the first method. Using Newton's formula from his second law of physics, force equals mass times acceleration, we're left generally with a couple of problems. To do this method, we're gonna need Ganondorf's mass, which according to various wikis, Ganondorf's weight was posited at 132 kilograms. Now the word posited is just a fancy word for educated guess. Keep this in mind. Cool, we've got the weight now, but to get his rate of acceleration in the punch, we're gonna need to get his initial velocity, his final velocity, and this means finding a way to estimate the distance that the punch is traveling and then time how fast that punch traveled. Oh dear. <sighs> oh goodness, we're really gonna do this. Alright, so Link is situated below Ganondorf here. We know Link's cannon height is 1.7 meters tall, so if we use Link's height and uh, Link himself as a measuring stick, we can arrive finally at a nice lovely rounded distance of approximately 5.1 meters that Ganon's punch is traveling. Now, using the magical ability of video editing, I've counted that Ganondorf's punch travels this distance of 5 5.1 meters to the impact point at 14 frames, which is effectively more or less 0.233333 seconds, so basically 233.333 milliseconds. Oh, jeez, that's a lot of threes. That's it. Uh, that's actually crazy fast for a punch. The Guinness World Record holder, Keith Liddell, had a punch at 45 miles per hour, and Ganon's final velocity clocks in at 48.89 miles per hour, which means Ganon's punching slightly faster than a world record holder. So, okay, Ganondorf's fast, cool, but uh, how much force is he imparting? <sighs> well, now that we have all these things, I can just skip all that crazy math talk and just tell you after calculating his acceleration 
and then his force. What we get after all of this is 12,364.44 newtons or units of force and this is really just kind of disappointing honestly. Why? Okay, well, let me put it this way. That floor is almost certainly some kind of a stone or rocky material and well, let's just put it down to the floor being made of a lava. Uh, I mean, marble. Nobody jump, it's, it's, it's okay. Anyway, if we say, pretend that the floor was made of marble, mainly because a lot of really nice stone floors like this tend to be made of that and it does look a lot like carved marble. Anyway, marble has a PSI strength value of 20,000, which I guess when converted to Newtons is 137,895,145.86 Newtons per meter squared. Either way you want to cut it, Ganondorf's power calculated is just not enough to break it. Not even crack it! Maybe leave a little oil mark, you'd have to clean it off though. But no, no earth shattering punch. Just a really, really badly hurt hand. The other thing I should probably mention is that most other rocky materials like marble all have similar strength values. Taking uh, granites as an example, uh, granite sits at around 19,000 PSI. Now, in spite of all of this, the takeaway from this method, however, is that we now know how much power Ganondorf's muscles are putting out in this punch, and look, even then, it's equally as disappointing when you compare Ganondorf's measly 12.3 thousand force of Newton's punch to world record holder Nagano, who, uh, has a punch output of 129,161 uh, Newtons. Uh, Ganon just barely clocks in at approximately one-tenth that record. Uh, so what gives? Well, this is why we now look at this little thought experiment backwards. We know it takes at least 137,895,145.86 Newtons of force to overcome the marble flooring, so... If we just took this as a shortcut and simply went with this as Ganondorf's total force output, uh, we'd be at least within a closer reach of the exact force of Newtons. Huh, I don't know why I didn't think about this before. Something about YouTube's watch time algorithm? Uh, anyway, we now have our estimated force behind Ganon's punch, but remember, we calculated earlier his muscular power based on his actual movements in game and his cannon weight. But what we've calculated here is the estimated forces based on the end result, meaning we could interpret this as the total force output created from Ganon's muscular effort combined with enhanced power boosts given to him from the Triforce of Power. So if we took his uh, muscular power of 12,364 newtons and plugged it into this other number, we could in fact get three separate answers here. Subtracting his muscle power our value from the values calculated from the total end result, we're left with the force of Newtons eked out on this floor that's being thumped into oblivion, which is approximately 137.8 million Newtons, which is slightly smaller, but now we're left with a very amazing answer. More or less, we now know how much force behind Ganon's earth-shattering punch came specifically from the Triforce of Power. Using this number and calculating the difference, we can now determine that the Triforce of Power has a multiplier to the user's strength, durability, and all other faculties of approximately 11,151.55. That's an astonishingly huge power-up and it really makes you wonder how strong Link would have been with it, but more than that? How much of that punch's destructive capacity came from Ganondorf's lightning magic? To be fair, I'd say whatever magic or strength anyone in Hyrule possesses isn't going to even come close to the power the Triforce of Power holds. So in my own personal estimation, I'd put Ganon's magic down to maybe 1,000 being subtracted off the multiplier? Okay, maybe 1,151 just to make it a nice even 10k for the Triforce of Power's multiplier. Also, I said earlier the Triforce of Power needs to augment not just Ganondorf's strength, but his durability as well, because the consequences of being able to 
put out such a tremendous force? Well, Newton's third law of equal and opposites means Ganon's hand, arm, shoulder, spine, and the rest of his body is gonna feel that force as well. According to sources, the femur bone of the thigh takes approximately 4,000 newtons to break and the femur is larger than the humerus of the arm. <laughs> humerus. Sounds kind of funny for a bone. Oh dang, two puns in one go. Ha, uh, Cutlol would be proud. Bad jokes aside, for all it's worth, Ganondorf's punch juiced up 10,000 or 11,000 times his base from the Triforce of Power. Well, all of it, all of it, all that 137,895,145.86 newtons put out from Ganondorf equates to 0.03 tons of TNT, which is about 27 kilograms of TNT, which I guess fits the bill enough given the floor explodes. Oh uh, wait, Google says one kilogram of TNT creates a pressure wind blast of approximately 240 whole kilometers an hour? Oh, okay. I guess we just multiply this by 27.21. <sighs> Which, you know, it's only a blast wind of 6,531 kilometers, I guess. Oh boy, it only takes generally something to travel 218 kilometers an hour to break skin, and that would be the least of Ganondorf's concerns. Either way, if Link got his golden gauntlet mitts on the Triforce and threw hands with Ganondorf, uh, yeah, no, Ganondorf's gonna need a lot more than three stocks or lives if he ever wants to live long enough to see tomorrow. And mm, yeah, maybe Link too. <laughs> Uh, this was a fun little what if. Tell me how much you think Ganon's magic should or shouldn't have been subtracted from this in the comments. I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts on this. Thinkers, if you enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to support the channel's content monetarily, you can join as a member on Patreon or join on YouTube. Both will get your name in the credits and behind the scenes access. Now, before I head out, be sure to share some of that love and support around at my partner's Instagram at ElfspringArt. Additionally, Elfie is now open for commissions publicly. So if you want something created, again, head down to their Instagram page. Give them a follow. Love ya, Elfie. Thinkers, have a big brained, funky day, and be sure to think safe out there. Bye bye.